Jane, you've stated that climate change creates both challenges and opportunities for New Jersey. Tell me about some of the opportunities and what the council will do to facilitate change. Yeah, thanks for that question, Rhonda. So just taking a quick step back, since day one, the governor has made it very clear that he sees the clean energy agenda as a very important piece of two of his biggest priorities, which are economic development and equity. And the council is a very intentional way to really address both of these issues as we transition to the, to the uh, green economy. So how will you ensure that this economic development is spread throughout the state? You mentioned uh, wind farms, wind development. We know that's in South Jersey, but how will you make sure hard hit areas of the state also benefit? Absolutely. And that's one of the biggest priorities with this council and with what we're trying to achieve through the clean energy agenda. We want to make sure that everyone in the state, no matter what their zip code is, or what their income is, has the opportunity to both take advantage of the clean energy economy and where they want to, to participate in, in the clean energy economy. So yes, the, the wind farms are, are in South Jersey, but there's solar all across the state. There's energy efficiency all across the state. And we wanna make sure that, for example, where there is community solar, that those jobs that will be created are available to folks who are living in communities that are taking advantage of community solar. What are some of the hurdles though when it comes to workforce training? What are some of the obstacles that you might face? And obviously there's such a great need right now to get people retrained who have lost their jobs due to the pandemic. So workforce training is really the, the key here in understanding what kinds of trainings there need to be to meet the, the job demands of tomorrow. And that is what we are doing with this council. We're on, so for folks who have uh, lost their jobs for, for whatever reason, because of the pandemic, um, or who, who will be transitioning from traditional energy jobs into clean energy jobs, for folks who have been traditionally underemployed in the energy we are really working on what kinds of trainings we need to ensure that all of those folks will have opportunities in the clean energy economy. So I know you're just getting started, but give us a sense of the timeline. When will we start hearing recommendations or see possibilities in terms of economic development and some of this workplace training? We have one year, not a lot of time, to put together a very robust and actionable plan. We have to present that plan, and we, in my personal, um, my personal objective is that this is uh, not an academic exercise. This is really a roadmap that we can use to, to chart our future and our equitable future. And we are gonna use these recommendations to inform the work of our state agencies as we move this important work forward. Jane, thanks for sharing some of this insight with us. We're gonna be tracking the journey very closely. So we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more clips and episodes of NJ Business Beat, subscribe to the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel.